Hello, and welcome to my pre-algebra review series. This video covers Chapter 2, Section 7, titled Try, Test, Revise. In math problems, you can make an initial conjecture. You can test your conjecture. If it's not the correct answer, you can use what you've learned from your first conjecture to make a better second or, or next conjecture. In this section review, we will be re revisiting the test, try, revise method of problem solving and will re-familiarize ourselves with its use and application. Please leave a like if you find this video to be helpful. Give your classmates a heads up too. It will more than likely help them and it certainly will be help this channel to be seen by more students. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them and do my best to answer each as time permits. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to be notified every time I re release a new video. Thank you. Okay, objective one of try, test, revise. Math strategies in action. So it says here, did you know that meteorologists use weather balloons to collect data? They use the temperature and humidity and other data in mathematical models to bring you your daily weather forecast. As more data becomes available from weather balloons and satellites, etc., the models and therefore the weather reports become more accurate. Similarly, in math problems, you can make an initial conjecture, you can test your conjecture, it is, and if it is not the right answer, you can use what you've learned from your first conjecture to make a better second conjecture. Okay, example 1a, we're going to call it because there are more slides to this first piece here. It's a real world problem to solve and it's ticket sales. So the theater club at the school put on a play. For one performance, the club sold 100, 133 tickets and raised $471. Okay, the total cost or the, excuse me, the ticket cost for adults was $4 and $3 for students. So you, it's, as you probably even know yourself, that the adult tickets are usually more than the student tickets. How many student tickets and how many adult tickets did the club sell? So we know they sold some of each. Uh, they raised $471 and there are 133 tickets. So how many did they, how many adult tickets did the club sell? So we start by looking at this problem and the, and the words we're reading here this it says to read and understand so you look at the given information to make an informed conjecture so what would be an informed conjecture well we look at the numbers of tickets the amount of money and you make a guess i make a, a, a what would be a good guess hopefully as to how many adult tickets and how many student tickets were sold that's a starting place that's your conjecture so it says how much does each ticket cost this is information you have to pull out to start formulating this conjecture. How much did each ticket cost? How many tickets did the club sell for the performance? We know that, there's 133 tickets. Uh, how much money did the club raise from the sale of all the tickets? Well, they raised $471, we know that. Um, then if you, you also you have to plan and solve a little bit further. So now you've got some basic information and now you're going to uh, move on with that. You're gonna say, so when you make a conjecture, how many uh, for how many adult tickets were sold you can use your conjecture to find how many student tickets were sold so what that means is if we were to say and you're going to we'll see an example here shortly uh, there were 50 adult tickets well if you have 50 you think there's 50 adult tickets and there's 133 tickets right up here 133 tickets sold then you're going to say well 133 minus 50 and we'll know how many student tickets there were that's basically what that's saying. And by what number do you multiply your conjecture of adult tickets sold to find out how much money was made from adult tickets? Well, if you know that you're making $471, if you know how much you made for the adult tickets, then you can, by deduction, know how much money you made from the student tickets. So let's go on. We'll take a look now and see how they put this together. Okay, so now for our real world here example of this ticket sales, we're going to put together a table and try to find out how much money was made from adult and student tickets uh, by uh, doing this try, uh, you know, test and 
revise method. So here it's showing that you make a, your first conjecture is to make a, a logical choice. You say, well, we sold 130, it's right here. We sold 133 tickets right here. So if we sold 133 tickets, maybe half of them or maybe a little less than half were adult tickets. Maybe there are some more students than adult. Well, let's start at 60 adult tickets because that means there's 120 would be double that. And there's a little bit more for the students. Yeah. So 60 adults and 73 students. And that's what we're finding out here. If you take 33 tickets so 33 tickets and you subtract the 60, you get the 73, which is how much the uh, how many students there were. Well now you know now you want to figure out you know there's how much money it was four hundred and seventy one dollars. So now we're gonna say, well, what did it cost for the sixty tickets? adult tickets and the 73 student tickets well when we add when we multiply these together and then add them up we're going to find out that the adult tickets were 240 dollars and the student tickets were 219 dollars well when we add that together we get 459 and 459 is less than the 471 so something has to increase so we're going to increase the adult tickets and try another number. It's another, another try. We're trying, we're testing, we're revising. We're now revising. And the revising is, oh, let's try 80. So they put an 80 in for the adult tickets. 133 minus 80 is 53. So now there are 53 student tickets. And you take and multiply this out, and it's 80 times 4, and 53 times 3, and you get 320 for the adult tickets, 159 for the student tickets. And when you add those together, you get $479. $479 is more than the amount of money they made. So let's try it again. So if 80 was too much, 60 wasn't enough, 80 was too much, well, let's try somewhere in between. Let's do 70. Okay, so 133 minus 70 is 63. 70, 70 adult tickets times 4 plus 63 from here, 63 student tickets is $280 for the adult tickets and $189 for the student tickets. You add those together and you get 469. A little bit low. So something's got to go up. We're gonna to have to go up a couple bucks on something. So instead of doing thirty-three, instead of doing seventy tickets, let's try seventy-two tickets. Seventy-two adult tickets. One hundred thirty-three minus seventy-two is sixty-one. So seven hundred seventy-two times four plus sixty-one times three is two hundred eighty-eight plus one hundred eighty-three. And if you look at it here, two eighty-eight plus one hundred eighty-three is. 471. So now by this try, test, revise method, we made a few iterations through the problem. And because of that, we now have learned that there were 72 adult tickets and 61 student tickets. <clears throat> so it actually, my original conjecture is wrong when I said possibly there were more adults than students, right? I, but or, or I said, no, there are more students than adults. But when you look here, you see that there were more adults than students went to this, to this play. Okay? So for example one again on slide D in this real world problem, we're going to look back and check part. And it says, it is possible to solve the problem in another way too. Consider using logical reasoning. So let's go through this. It says, the less expensive ticket is three dollars because we know the adult tickets four and the student tickets are three dollars. Okay, so it says so the theater club would get a hundred and thirty three times three if all the tickets were students. If no adults showed up, if they had a hundred and thirty three sold, they would get three times one hundred and thirty, which would be three hundred and ninety nine dollars if all the tickets sold were student tickets. So they say 471 right here minus 399 is 72. The theater club actually raised 72 more dollars than if it had only sold student tickets. So what is that telling you? If if all the tickets are already are at the $3 level already, but 
it really made 72 more dollars. That means that there were 72 one dollar increments probably, right? Well, is there a one dollar increment? Yes, it's the adult ticket is four, the student ticket is three, so that one dollar increment is the difference between the students and the adults. So what is it saying here now? It says, since the adult tickets are a dollar more than the student tickets, there must have been 72 adult tickets sold. Because they assumed it was all $3 tickets, but there was more money, so everything in excess of the $3 had to come from adult tickets. And it was $1 per adult ticket, so 72 is the number of adults. So 133 minus 72 is 61. And there were 61 student tickets sold. If you remember back, it was 61 student tickets. Since 72 times 4 plus 61 times 3 is 471, the solution, 72 adult tickets and 61 student tickets, is correct. This is a, a nicer way of solving it, actually, by doing this, lo this logical reasoning than the iteration method. Because sometimes the iteration could have taken you 20 iterations. It could have took, taken 100 iterations. Who knows? Um, there are me other methods of solving this that weren't used for the iteration part. You could use what they call a binary search, but maybe in the future we'll go into that. But the point is, you'd still take way more. This way only took five steps and they had the answer. I like this method. Okay, for example, one here, it says check your understanding. Let's try it again with another set of numbers or at least one different number. Suppose the club sold the same number of tickets that was 133, as you recall. But they raised $452. The other one was 471, if I'm not mistaken. How many tickets of each type did the theater sell? Well, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to start, and apparently it looks like we're going to start at 60 again. Okay, so we're starting at 60 tickets, and we did the same thing. We subtracted 160 from 130. 130 minus 60, and we got 73. Okay, <clears throat> that's kind of the same numbers we had before. 60 times 4 and 73 times 3 is 240 plus 219 is 459. That's the exact same because we used 60 that time. This time the numbers are lower, not 471. The actual sales were lower, so we're going to go down with the 50. So they're going to go down. We're going to go down and just try 50. Okay, so now if you try 50, you get 33, tick 133 sold. 50 we're assuming were adult, that means 83 were student tickets. 50 times 4 plus 83 times 3 is 200 for the 50 times 4. 249 for the 83 times 3 equals $449. Well, $449 is less than the $452 that they say that they sold. That That's how much money they raised. So that means since we're low that time, that means we have to raise up the adult tickets a little. We have to go up some. Well, how far do we go up? Well, in this conjecture, we're going to 53. We're going to add three more. So 133 minus 53 is 80. Okay. So that means 53 adult tickets, 53 times 4. 80 student tickets, 80 times 3, is 212 for the 53 times 4. And 240 for the 80 times 3, and you end up with $452. And that's exactly what the number was. So at this time, the total is how many adult, How many adults were there? There were 53 adults and 80 students. OK, so in this check your understanding, um, no more tables. They want us to go back and attempt to solve it with the second method that we talked about, the logical, logical deduction, right? So what are we going to do to solve it that way? So this, the amount of money they raised was $452. And we're going to find out how many student and how many adult tickets there were. We know that the adult tickets were $4 a piece. And we know that the student tickets were $3 a piece. And we know that they made $452. And there, was, there were 133 tickets sold. That's all the information from the previous. So this is where we're, where we're at. So what did we do last time? We said, well, let's assume that every ticket was a student ticket. So there's 133 tickets. 133 tickets. 
all times 3. And that equals, I don't know, what does that equal to? 9, and 3 is 9, and 3. $399. Oh, yeah, it's obvious now that I look at it stepping back. $399. Well, they made $452 right here, $452. But if they just sold student tickets right here, they would have had only $399. So what did that mean? That means that the adult tickets had to make up the difference. And since the diff price difference between student and adult tickets is $1, you can assume that there were that many adult tickets sold is the number of is the difference here in, in, in the between the 452 and the 9399. So 452 is 52 and one is 53. Am I, did I do that right? 450? Yes, 53. 53. 53 adult tickets. So I'm going to write that down. 53 adult tickets. Okay. So that would be, and, and obviously, the student was 133 minus 53 is what we would have been. So it's 53 adult and 80. So 133 minus 53 is it equals 80. So there's 150, or excuse me, 53 adult tickets and 80 student tickets. You see how we did that? We just took the difference and bing, bang, bow. You four steps, you got the answer. It's pretty slick. <clears throat>